Hogwarts Legacy features 13 different broom appearances for us to unlock, allowing each of us to choose from a wide variety of broomstick aesthetics. This video is going to explore where to find or how to unlock each one and go over their unique appearance-based effects, all in the order of what I believe to be worst to best. Let's get to it. Down at the bottom is one of the brooms acquired from Sprint Witches in Hogsmeade, that being the Wind Wisp. And looking at the design, we can see exactly why it's called that. Now, I don't entirely hate it, but the end is indeed a bit overly wispy. Now, I know brooms work off of magic, of course, but I think the bristles just look a little flimsy. The seat is a nice touch, though, so at least it looks kind of comfy. But then again, the seating and handle colour is a little bit grim looking. Lanterns, though, are always a useful practical touch on brooms, though there are, in my opinion, nicer looking lantern brooms than this. This. All in all, not especially terrible for the price, but when all 5 starter brooms are 600 galleons anyway, that isn't exactly an advantage. And well, on a personal level, I just find all the other ones to be nicer than this. Sorry if this is your favourite. The second broom, sold by Abby Weeks on this list, the Hogwarts House broom is wrapped in fabric with the sigil and colour of whatever Hogwarts house you chose. A pretty cool feature, which if you replay this game, can technically be up to four brooms in one. Beyond that, it's a pretty bog standard design though, to be honest, with no proper seating, standout design features, or things of interest. Though for 600 galleons, what more can you really expect? Well, to be fair, as later entries will show, we can expect at least a little bit more. With all the varying broom designs in the wizarding world, it's often easy to forget the archetypal broom design upon which all of these are based. Though, thankfully, one of the more spenny brooms in this game does offer a return to form, in the shape of the family antique broom. This one can be bought down near Feldcroft, just southwest of the local battle arena. Nearby is also a cliff with some balloons to pop. Make sure to do this, it'll be important later. When you're done, hop down by this building here and meet Priya Treadwell. She's the wife of Nora Treadwell, who sets us up for the Merlin trials earlier in the game. Priya will sell you this broom for 2,500 galleons, pretty expensive, but the cheapest of all travelling merchant brooms. And sure, it definitely looks old and tacky, but that to me is part of the charm. We have no idea how old this broom is, with generations being the only description we're given. Suffice to say though, I'm sure several cackling witches have flown over bogs and in front of the moon on this during their time. The Bright Spark is the go-to broomstick of choice for any budding astronomer. It has a nice sleek design, with a seat resembling something from an old bicycle, and two pretty bright dangling stars. No doubt, after spending copious hours seeking out balloons, stars will be all too familiar to you. Yes, this is the reward for popping all 32 balloon clusters in the game. And to be honest, having just done that before writing this section of script, I feel a bit underwhelmed right now. Look, I'm not going to pretend like this is a bad looking broom, it's not. And the stars even provide an illumination bonus. But as the top reward for flying through all of those balloons, well, let's just say I personally wish they'd switched around this one and the wildfire broom, which we'll get to later. That one at least feels like a more special reward. Even still, this one's a nice piece of kit, worth having, probably. Though I'd only go out of my way to get it again for the completionist aspect, and not necessarily for the broom itself. Still, I'm sure a meat will probably love this thing, and perhaps it's better used as payment for that telescope he gave us. Another potential starter broom, the U Weaver, is described as comfortable and speedy. I do wonder how its comfort compares to a lot of the other brooms though, when most of those have built-in comfortable seating. Even still, marketers will probably tell you anything to sell their product, and I guess the only real way to find out for ourselves is to buy and test it. Well, seeing as my character is giving no complaints, I guess they were telling the absolute truth. The bristles of this one are pretty densely packed, and if they operated with any science whatsoever behind them, I'd wager this one probably has a lot of horse power behind it. It's kind of a shame actually that broom stats don't really vary from broom to broom, since it would give an even greater purpose to acquiring different ones. What this does offer however, which others don't, is this cool weaving light show effect as we're flying. A pretty magical effect and something nice to look at as we're doing long flights down south especially. You know, a wise wizard once said, Man, wouldn't it be great if I could go on a picnic and carry my basket somehow? Then an equally wise and more business savvy wizard heard this remark and got to work, designing the Lickety Swift broom. Its main feature, as you'd no doubt expect, is a little mount on the back for housing a small picnic basket. In fact, whenever we accelerate with this thing, we can see the picnic basket bounce up and down. A very nice detail, though this must be a very well-balanced basket. Also, since undetectable extension charms are commonplace in this 
world, who's to say we couldn't pack an entire banquet into this thing? Not only that, but this broom looks comfy as hell. Alright, the handle somewhat resembles an air rifle, admittedly, and now I can't unsee that, but all in all, it's a cool design. And for popping five groups of balloons, which bear in mind is on top of the initial two groups, so seven groups in total, it's still a very nice reward for not too much effort. The next one up is the Sky Scythe, and fair warning, it comes at a pretty steep price hike. Seeking out the travelling merchant Leopold Babcock over here by the Hogsmeade station, he's prepared to sell you this broom for no less than 5,000 galleons. And for such a ridiculous price, I wouldn't blame you for believing that this one actually did yield an advantage when flying. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem to. The only real way to improve speed on a broom, in fact, is to complete the time trials for Albi weeks, and then purchase his upgrades as they become available. What this arguably over price broom does offer, however, is an ornate and impressive design. The green and black bristles, combined with the very nicely decorated handle and saddle, almost reminds me of a peacock feather. The seat also must provide our character plenty of comfort, though is such a thing worth forking out 5k on? Well, no, most definitely not. But for the completionists among us with spare money to throw away, you're gonna have to purchase it at some point, and in my opinion, it's one of the nicer ones to look at in the game. Now, I don't know about you, but this next one reminds me a bit of a Nimbus 2001. You know, from Chamber of Secrets, perhaps it's the darker bristles. But rather than a gift from Draco's father, whom I hear, unlike some, can afford the best, we have to earn this one through talent. And by talent, I mean the very straightforward task of locating two groups of balloons and flying through all five of them. Yep, that's how it works. We take down the Chinese spy balloons and get rewarded with broomsticks. And for the fact of how easy this one is, it's absolutely worth getting. I mean, lots of of the brooms look pretty uncomfortable to sit on, to be honest, but the seat for this one is quite possibly the comfiest looking in the game. Okay, look, I'm not saying they should overcomplicate the flying mechanics in this game with comfort meters and things, but it's nice to think that our character isn't having too unpleasant of a time flying about the place. Another classic looking witch's broom, though this one is arguably for a more classy witch than the heirloom one. By heading down to Maramween Bridge in the southern part of the map, we can buy this one from Rohan Prakash for 3,000 galleons. And this one has several interesting features. The seat appears comfy enough to recline onto, and the top is curved into a hook. I mean, that's a nice hanging feature which few others consider, but without a doubt, the coolest and most unique feature of this broom is the hanging cauldron, which glows with a mysterious blue liquid when we fly. Canonically, this is obviously for the witch or wizard who likes to brew on the go. Just a shame that it's not an actual feature of the broom, since even with the efficient fast travel we have, this would be quicker than returning to the room of requirement every time our supplies dwindle. Even still, it's a cool idea for a well-designed broom that maybe modders can fix. My second favourite of the Hogsmeade brooms is without a doubt the Moon Trimmer. Looking at this one actually reminds me of one of the very first shots from Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. You know, where Hagrid lands on his flying motorbike. Just something about the saddlebags and the lantern give off similar vibes to that bike for me. No doubt, this broom is one of the top picks for overnight travel. Sure, the saddlebags again offer no real practical use in game, but their aesthetic and canonical presence do offer the broom a little more character. And the lantern, well, that actually does serve a practical purpose when used at night. I mean, obviously. Flying in caves or low to the ground especially, we get a nice illuminating glow coming off of this one, with the more white light evidently being the inspiration behind the name Moon Trimmer. It's also said to be crafted from ash and provides stability, which to be fair, comes across very well in the design. Again, 600 galleons seems a more than fair price for this broom in my eyes, and I almost, almost chose it as my starter, but for one contender, which I'll get to in a bit. Next we have what is, in my opinion, one of the most aesthetically pleasing brooms in the entire game, but getting it will require more work, and not to mention galleons, than usual. We start this quest in the region just south of Hogwarts down here, where we come across a friendly and well-mannered goblin. Arn has had his supplies pillaged by Ranrock's loyalists and his carts have been stolen. We simply have to infiltrate a nearby camp, defeat the goblins and open the gates for the enchanted carts to return to their owner. Arn is of course very grateful for our help, though evidently not grateful enough Enough to offer a discount on this very expensive broom. Or perhaps this is just the discounted price, I don't know. We can find him again a bit further south of the original location to acquire the Silver Arrow, a pristine looking broom which if we could find any giants in this game to fire it, could no doubt fulfil its namesake properly. Even still, flying this one through the air, it's fun to imagine you've been fired from a bow and are shooting quickly towards a target. 
The Ember Dash Broom is yet another which can be purchased cheaply at the shop in Hogsmeade for 600 galleons. And personally, this was the first one I chose. The glowing embers for this broom not only make it stand out in the shop's menu, but give it a nice extra something when flying as well, especially at night. The handle isn't bad either, with an ornate if uncomfortable looking seat and plenty more bells and whistles to make it look pretty. Brooms though definitely started to take a much more minimalist approach by the end of the 20th century, that's for sure. Though, to be fair, Victorian decor has always been pretty lavish. Overall, having never seen designer broomsticks like this before, this one massively drew me in and encompassed the vast majority of my broom usage throughout my first playthrough. We finally come to number one. The Wildfire Broom is my personal favourite for a number of reasons. For starters, it's the third broom unlocked from the Bloom Challenges, which is far enough along to be rewarding, but not so much as to become tedious. Aesthetically, it's also awesome, and is what I'd imagine would happen if somebody converted a staff to a broom. The glowing embers are very similar to the Ember Dash, but on closer inspection, we can see the fire is a bit more intense. This thing can explode like a jet on occasion when accelerating, and a constant heat blur can be seen rising from it. The front will often flip up when decelerating, which to be fair is a little weird, and I can't tell if that's a bug or a feature, and also the seat isn't as lavish looking as others on this list, but even still a very nice looking broom on the whole, which wins out on the awesome fire aspects in general. In fact, this one feels more worthy of the name Firebolt than, well, the Firebolt. An absolute beast of a broom, more than worthy of its spots at the top of my list. But obviously I more than expect your opinion to differ to mine on these, and I'd love to hear your thoughts down below as to your favourite broom designs in Hogwarts Legacy and why. I hope this video helped you out in learning how to get all the brooms in the game and that the features shown help you to decide which ones to go for first. As always, likes are greatly appreciated and if you want more Hogwarts Legacy content then do consider subscribing as I'll be back with more very soon. Thank you very much for watching, I'm Sam Bram and I'll see you soon in another video.